Our world is rife with mysteries and enigmas. Through the years, a myriad of wondrous events have occurred and thousands of amazing discoveries have been made. We can never be quite sure what lies beyond the horizon. Between archaeological wonders and the rapid development of technology, there is an unbound potential for our future. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries and announcements. Leonard Woolley and the Flood – Mesopotamian Archaeological Evidence The Mesopotamian Flood has been speculated on for centuries and has been investigated time and time again. The majority of historians assert that the Great Flood occurred during the rise of humanity and was the source of the fabled biblical tale of Noah's Ark. During excavations in 1928-1929, archaeologists at the historical sites of Ur and Kish unearthed flood deposits which they connected with the flood as according to ancient Hebrew scriptures. Sir Charles Leonard Woolley, a famous British archaeologist, arrived at the scene to investigate further and it did not take him long to reach his conclusion. It was, in his eyes, proof of the flood. In an excerpt from his 1954 book, he states, By the time I had written up my notes, I was quite convinced of what it all meant, but I wanted to see whether others would come to the same conclusion. So, I brought up two of my staff and, after pointing out the facts, asked for their explanation. They did not know what to say. My wife came along and looked and was asked the same question, and she turned away remarking casually, Well, of course, it's the flood. The first test pit used by Woolley was tiny, so the following archaeological season he dug up several more test pits, one of which being ridiculously large, 75 by 60 feet, and 65 feet deep. In this pit, he found a deposit of clean, water-laid soil up to 11 feet thick. Notably, this evidence of the flood was lacking in several other pits in the area, but Woolley wholeheartedly believed that he had found proof of the biblical flood. After only a few years, another discovery was made at a third Mesopotamian site, Shurupak, where they found a flood stratum. According to myth, Zeusudra, the Sumerian Noah, lived in Shurupak. This flood residue separated the skeletal remains from the late proto-literate and early dynastic period, dating around 2950 and 2850 BCE, though no other Mesopotamian sites have any such evidence. Despite an attempt made by the creationists to decide an exact timeline for biblical events, the Bible lacks any specific dates for the flood that occurred in Genesis, or any other mentioned happening. Stories of the Mesopotamian flood are useful since one is able to draw similarities and contrast differences between the flood of Noah's Ark in Hebrew scriptures and the myth of the Mesopotamian floods and debate whether they were one and the same. Many scholars through the ages have believed wholeheartedly that the similarities between the two provide irrefutable proof of the biblical flood's existence. As such, the widely accepted view is that the original accounts that appear in Genesis arose in Mesopotamia. And this is further proven by the fact that Mesopotamian accounts of such great, terrible flood outdate the accounts made in the Bible. Furthermore, the Sumerian king list references a great flood. The king list is a very complicated document which has multiple editions. It's thought that it was created at some point in 2100 BCE. The king list is a report of every monarch and all the dynasties of ancient Mesopotamia, from the origin of kingship which descended from heaven up until the time it was made. However, the list is flawed. The length of each king's reign is impossibly long, and several early dynasties have glaring discrepancies. Even with these mistakes in mind, the Sumerian king list is a valuable document which has preserved names and bloodlines of real, ancient rulers. According to the king list, the flood destroyed everything, cutting through the dynasties until kingship once again descended from heaven and the list of rulers continued. The majority of modern creationists often choose to ignore the Sumerian king list completely, stating that the Mesopotamian flood does not fall into agreement with the liberalist view of the Genesis flood, primarily the fact that, if the Bible is to be taken seriously, Noah and his family were the flood's only survivors. The king list opposes this view. The problem is that if you ignore the evidence provided by the Sumerian king list, 
then the findings at Ur and Kish must too be ignored as they only support claims of a local flood which would have certainly left survivors. The flood, though intense, was not nearly as large scale as the Bible claimed its Genesis flood to have been, and though severely destructive, would not have destroyed every human in its vicinity. The question of whether what Leonard Woolley found was the remnants of the biblical flood or simply an unrelated natural disaster has yet to be answered because there is a lack of modern investigation. The flooding of southern Mesopotamia was presumably disastrous enough for stories of a great flood to spread through the country and ancient world. But because the records we have are so old and were passed down by word of mouth for centuries before being written down, many details have surely been exaggerated or simply lost to time. Our Lady of the Pillar Our Lady of the Pillar is a title given to the Virgin Mary with the ancestral belief that whilst she lived in Jerusalem, Mary bilocated and appeared to the Apostle James the Greater in 40 AD while he was preaching in the Roman Hispania, now known as modern Spain. The title also refers to the image celebrating the Marian apparition which lies enshrined in Zaragoza, Aragon, Spain, at the Cathedral Basilica. Pope Pius X granted her image an official canonical coronation in 1905. Bilocation is a supernatural spiritual ability where a person manages to be in two places at once using meditation and astral projection. Catholic legend states that in the antiquity of Christianity, the apostles of Jesus travelled through the known world to spread their gospel to the masses. James the Greater experienced immense obstacles in his missionary quest and was deeply discouraged, questioning whether he should go on. It is said that one evening as he prayed on the banks of the river Ebro at modern Zaragoza, Mary spiritually travelled to speak with him, despite her physical body being in Jerusalem. With her came thousands of angels, all of whom were sent to encourage him to continue his missionary duty. Ancient Roman tombs of early Christians show some of the earliest Marian devotion to Zaragoza, which have images of the Virgin Mary inside. Though the tradition of worshipping the Marian apparition begun in the 15th century, thought to be either in 1434 or 1435, when an inferno destroyed the altarpiece of the church, which was then replaced with a representation of the Marian apparition visiting John the Greater. In 1456, Pope Calixtus III issued a papal bull which declared a seven-year indulgence for those who visited Our Lady of the Pillar. In another account, this time by Maria de Agreda, Mary, Mother of God, was transported from Jerusalem to Hispania on a mystical cloud of angels during the night. It was during this same night that the angels built a grand pillar of marble and created the image of Mary with the baby Messiah. Did Kathleen Martinez find Cleopatra's lost tomb? Cleopatra is perhaps the most infamous Egyptian ruler. However, contrary to popular belief, she was not actually Egyptian. In fact, she was Greek, but she ruled over the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt between 51 BC and 30 BC. She was the last ruler of Egypt whilst it was in the hands of the Ptolemaic Empire before the Romans stormed in and annexed it as part of the Great Roman Empire. Cleopatra has been immortalized in popular culture to this day. Films have been made about her life, masses of literature written, artwork painted and sculptures sculpted. She is best known for her manipulative involvement in the Roman civil wars, wooing Mark Antony away from his friend Octavian's sister, as well as being romantically involved with Antony's friend Julius Caesar. Despite Cleopatra's affairs with both men, she was seen as a symbol of beauty and perfection in the ancient world. Despite her seductive nature, however, mysteries still surround the last queen of the Ptolemaic dynasty. One of these mysteries is where Cleopatra's tomb is situated. Like most of the Egyptian rulers, tombs give a fascinating insight into the life of the ruler who they were related to, and how much esteem they were held in by their subjects. Cleopatra is thought to have been buried with Mark Antony. Various expeditions have set out to locate Cleopatra's tomb, and the most recent theory as to where she was buried has come from Dominican lawyer and diplomat Kathleen Martinez. 
She believes that Cleopatra could be buried in or underneath a temple near the town of Tapusiris Magna. In the present day, the town is called Abu Sir and lies 28 miles west of Alexandria where Queen Cleo and Mark Antony were said to have lived. Tapasiris Magna was a bustling port in ancient Egypt, with vineyards famed for their rich wines. Whilst there is a possibility that Cleopatra may have been buried here, some believe that she may have actually requested a secret burial. The ancient Egyptians were spiritual people, and Cleopatra may have wished to be laid to rest where no one would disturb her eternal life together with Mark Antony. The problem is that Egyptian rulers were not known for being buried in temples. Temples were places of worship, and rulers tended to request to be buried in great tombs underneath the sandy plains of the Egyptian desert. However, when Kathleen Martinez and her team began excavating, they found a shaft that led to a great cavern underneath the desert, which appeared to have been decorated extensively. This, they believe, could be part of Cleopatra's tomb. Some academics believe that Cleopatra's tomb is harder to find because it may have actually been robbed hundreds of years ago. After all, rulers in ancient Egypt were buried elaborately, with selections of expensive materials that would aid them in the afterlife. Cleopatra's tomb would therefore likely have been a decent place for any thief to make a bit of money. Kathleen Martinez is far from finding any real evidence of Cleopatra being buried in the temple, and thus the mystery goes on. For how long? We do not know. But what do you make of these three discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.